All right, what's up, guys? This is Boxing Wave. Just wanted to do a quick video on Amir Khan and Kell Brook. I don't think I've really addressed it. I, I probably didn't in a live or something, but I wanted to do an actual video talking about this fight. And um, I'm I I I do still want to see the fight. You know, I always kind of said I wanted to see this, you know this fight. I, I actually got a video from 2014, 2014, like breaking this fight down. Like that's crazy. I think. At that time, Kell Brook was definitely still undefeated at that time. I don't know if this was before Sean Porter or after, but regardless, I, I spoke about this fight years ago, and I've spoken about it over the years, and I always said, like, Khan will never fight Kell Brook. The only time he'll fight him is at the end of his career where he has nowhere else left to go. You know, this fight will always make money in the UK. They're making it in Manchester, and they sold out in, like, 10 minutes. It made sense, you know? Um... I still want to see the fight. Obviously, I wish we saw it when they were closer in their prime, even if there was like four years ago or something. I still would have been interested in the fight. I still am now, but they're both definitely past it. And the thing that I keep seeing, like I, I feel like uh, I don't know who's the favorite to win this fight, but I see more people that believe Kell Brook is going to win. And it's because of Khan's chin. But I don't necessarily agree with that because even though Khan has always been chinny, Kell Brook's punch resistance seems to be gone. Um, he's he's taking more damage than Amir Khan. You know, we know Khan has been knocked out. He got knocked out by Breedis Prescott when he was younger. He got stopped by Danny Garcia and he got KO'd dramatically by Canelo Alvarez. Um, Terrence Crawford wasn't a real KO. So yes, he's been through, you know, he's, 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 he had the, the reputation of, of being chinny. Uh, you know, he's been hurt and rocked and wobbled, but Kel Brook for triple G. And in my years of doing YouTube content, I still, would have to say that that's probably one of the biggest mismatches that I've ever had to like do content on. You know, I mean, that fight, I don't know how that fight was ever allowed to get made. I mean, it was no point where I felt like Kell Brook would be a good challenge uh, for Gennady Golovkin. I mean, I even believe that Mikey Garcia had a better chance of being Errol Spence than Kell Brook being Gennady Golovkin at 160. You know, I mean, damn, they didn't even let Golovkin, like, come down to 154 at least to, you know, make it a little bit more even. They, Kelbrook went to 160 and came right back down, got half his face smashed in the Gennady Golovkin fight, got the other half smashed in the Errol Spence fight. And the thing is, those fights in between those, like, let's say, like, before Sean Porter. Before Kell Brook fought Sean Porter, there weren't really real any real true tests there for for Brook. You know, he didn't fight any elite fighters at the welterweight division. Um, and then after he beat Sean Porter, there wasn't really any true test until he fought Gennady Golovkin and Errol Spence. I believe he should have just went straight into Errol Spence while he was fresh, undefeated. Uh, he would have had a much better chance of win. I don't know if he would have won. I don't want to take credibility away from Errol Spence, but he would have been in much better shape to beat Errol at that point. Not going up, moving back down, coming off a, a you know a facial injury like that, a broken orbital bone, I believe. So he should have definitely, you know. And, and after that loss, with he went on a long streak of going back to fighting guys that we would expect him to beat. He didn't go and fought fight the elite. And Khan has said this, and this is why Khan, you know, I know many people just believe that Khan ducked Brook, and, and maybe he did, but Khan was putting himself in danger. Khan fought better fighters, fighting guys like, you know, Paulie and Zab and, you know, Prescott and Danny Garcia, uh, Louis Calazzo, um, Devin Alexander, a guy that Brook was supposed to fight before he fought Sean Porter. You know, those guys were supposed to fight. If you guys remember, he was supposed to fight 
Devin Alexander, when he was more in his prime, like three times, that would have been his best test to date. That would have been a great test going into a Sean Porter fight. Brooke didn't even take that fight. One time it was Devin's fault. The other time it was Brooke's fault. I forgot what the third time it was supposed to be. They rescheduled that fight like three times. You know? He wasn't really tested before Sean Porter. You know? And I I understand uh, Khan's argument. I didn't back then because I just wanted to fight. But I understand where Khan is coming from. Like, listen, I'm putting myself at risk. You're not just going to come in and get a shot playing it safe. You know, and I like Kel Brook and he's very talented. But as far as his resume is concerned, it's really not that deep. It's not, you know, and the, the, the best fighters he fought, he lost to. You know, the three top fighters he fought, he lost to. You know, if we're going to be honest. Um, overall, I think the better talent, prime for prime, I would say Amir Khan. But that's not to say that Kell Brook wouldn't have beaten him in his prime. You know, uh, there is a time where Khan, you know, Khan has always had a reputation of being chinny. And even if I believe that Khan might have been outboxing Brook, he might have caught something somewhere in that fight and get dropped or hurt or stopped. It's kind of the way I predicted the Canelo Alvarez. I think I got that prediction right. I think the round and everything I got right. Because I knew Khan was going to give Canelo issues. He has great hand speed. You know, he boxes well. But I just knew there was going to be a point where Canelo would catch him. And it was all strategy. Um, so anyway, look. I'm probably not going to do a real breakdown. Normally, I do film study and then I'll give you like a real breakdown. But the thing is with this fight... I really don't know who's going to win because I would be basing it on where they're at today, which I'm not sure. I don't know how they're both older. You know, I see that Khan is going to be working or have been working with Crawford and Bomat in preparation for this. Uh, I don't know how much that is going to matter, you know, at this stage in Khan's career. Uh, he has adjusted throughout his career, though. You know, I think when he was at 140, when he was stopped by Prescott, Back then, uh, he used to let his f hands fly a little too much. He used to stay in the pocket uh, a little too long. I think when he started working with Virgil Hunter, you know, maybe around the time when he moved to 147, at least, at least after the time he got stopped by Danny Garcia, I think he started to be a little bit more cautious, you know, the way he let his hands go. You know, he likes to like throw four or five punch combinations. He had awarded that down to like two or three, you know, step in, step out, land it at a one, two, then keep it moving. Um, but guys used to be able to time and catch him in between the punches. You know, uh, Kel Brook is more of a one, two fighter, all about timing, good counters. Um, you know, the timing was on point. It's all about timing with Brook. Not a good inside game, but knew how to defend himself in the inside. Uh, create the space that he needed to get his punches off. Didn't really smother himself much. Pretty accurate puncher. Good speed, good power, and probably more powerful, more of a puncher than Amir Khan. Khan can crack. You know, he put Maidana down. He did stop J Zab Judah. Uh, you know, you might say that Zab was past it even at that point, but it was a lot earlier than some of the other big fights Zab had later in his career. Um, But still a good fight. It's just that I can't break it down because I would do field study, study on older fights and I don't know where they're really at at this point. And I think both of them can potentially get stopped. You know, uh, I know Khan is not the biggest puncher, but Kell Brook's punch resistant is not nearly as great as it was because he's been damaged. As opposed to Khan, who's always been chill, chinny. Uh, so I really don't know. I think it's a 50-50. You know, they're both older guys. I think the loser of, of this fight is definitely done. You know, at this point. Especially if it's Kell Brook. You know, uh, if Khan is to lose on points, I still believe he can use his name alone to potentially get like an exhibition fight maybe in the future. Or like maybe fight one of the young, younger hungry guys. But, you know, both of them are at the very, very end, tail end of their careers, you know. And I think Kell Brook taking another loss at this point is just like, I mean, 
this is probably his last fight, you know. Uh, I think if he wins and looks impressive against Khan, he might try to entertain like one more good fight, but it's not much left. But even though this is way past it, it's, this fight is way too late. They were still able to sell out, which is crazy, you know. Like I said, I made a video in 2014 about these two fighting. Still up. I just checked it today. Uh, but uh, listen, I'm interested in the fight. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm just going to sit back on this one, not giving you a real thorough breakdown or anything. I think it's 50-50. I think anybody can win. Anybody can win on points. Anyone can win by knockdown. Um, you know, I mean, if there is a knockout, I'm expecting it to be from Brook a little bit more than a con. But if it goes to decision, I'm leaning a little bit more on Khan winning the decision, just more of the activity, you know. Uh, Khan, you know, I think Kel would probably need to pressure Khan a little bit, you know, be more of the aggressor to catch Khan. Uh, but he can still get caught and hurt, too. I think Khan is capable. Khan is not a huge puncher, but Khan is capable of hurting Kel Brook at this point of his career. Yes. All right. Um, anyway, just wanted to address it. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one, man. Subscribe, share the video, like the video. Peace.